from Wisp Politics in Madison. You're listening to Capital Chats. Hello, everybody, and welcome to a Wisp Politics Capital Chats podcast brought to you by Spectrum. I am Adam Kellenhofer. Today, I'm joined in the office by my colleague Kate Morton to talk about an interview she just did with Senator Brad Paff. He is a Democrat from Onalaska. And Kate, you and Senator Paff got to talk about his new PFAS legislation. Is that right? Yeah, that's right, Adam. There's been a lot of back and forth in the Capitol around this issue. Governor Evers is kind of at a standoff with Republicans about how to use funding to address the issue. And Senator Paff has introduced some legislation with his plan to use the money. So here's what he had to say. All right. Hello, Senator Paff. Thank you for joining me on the podcast today. Thank you very much for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah, of course. So I just want to talk a little bit about the PFAS legislation that you introduced last week. You know, there's a lot of different things in this legislation. So maybe you can give us some of the big highlights from that. Well, the big highlight is this, the fact that nobody uh, should drink water that comes from their tap that has PFAS in it. Uh, Unfortunately, uh, for the people in the town of Campbell, uh, they've been doing that for over three years. It is long past time as we as a legislature, uh, we get busy and uh, we do everything we can in order to remove uh, PFAS uh, from our drinking water uh, to make sure that the residents in the town of Campbell and people throughout the state, regardless of where they may live, they can go to their tap, uh, turn it on and drink the water that comes out. That is so very important. So the legislation uh, that I uh, introduced uh, last week uh, with my colleagues makes important efforts in order to, for once and for all, remove PFAS uh, from our drinking water. Uh, We move forward and we actually set a um, groundwater standard. And that is important because in Wisconsin, we have a surface water standard and we have drinking water standards, but we do not have a groundwater standard. So when we move to clean up PFAS, we have to clean it up to a particular standard. But if you do not have a groundwater standard, how do we know at what level uh, to clean this up? Sadly, um, you know, Wisconsin uh, does not have this, but yet our neighbors to the west in Minnesota uh, have uh, under, underground or groundwater standards, um, and we do not. And where the town of Campbell is located, uh, that is less than two miles as the bird flies. And I only think it's fair uh, that we move forward uh, with standards uh, as far as when it comes to cleanup. The other thing that this legislation does is it has a water quality monitoring, water quality testing, It continues to uh, work with uh, local um, homeowners as well as local units of government when it comes to disposing uh, of PFAS. It assists these local units of government and um, local homeowners when it comes to uh, uh, well compensation and um, well monitoring efforts. All of that is so very important. Uh, But the important thing is is that it recognizes the fact that uh, PFAS is uh, something that uh, we need to remove. Uh, from our drinking water. And uh, it's long past time that we in Wisconsin get that done. Yeah, in the legislation, there is also some mentions of the RAINS Act and how to get past that. Maybe you could give us some background on what the RAINS Act is and how your legislation could kind of address some ongoing issues related to that with PFAS. Well, I think we all recognize the fact that we want to make sure that Wisconsin uh, continues to stay competitive when it comes to growing our businesses. Um, And uh, I share that. I wanna make sure that our businesses here in Wisconsin continue to uh, grow and compete and succeed and employ uh, people that are based here in Wisconsin uh, and sell their products to markets all over this nation and all over the world. Uh, But I also think it's very important that uh, people in this state uh, have clean water. And um, in order to make sure that we move forward and working with um, the uh, Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources, which will help establish uh, these groundwater standards, uh, we need to uh, make sure that uh, this uh, new standards that are put in place, um, you know, recognizes uh, the fact that uh, PFAS, uh, sadly, uh, is uh, in more uh, water systems than uh, we want uh, or that we recognize. And uh, to do the research, to do the overview on this, the Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources estimated uh, that it would cost uh, more than what they are permitted 
um, to move forward with um, as far as with review process and uh, reforms because it costs more than $10 million. So what I have done working with uh, some of my legislative colleagues is drafted a very narrow piece of legislation that allows the uh, RAINS Act, which uh, states that the Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources could not put in place any rules uh, that cost more than $10 million. For When it comes to PFAS, uh, I have allowed uh, that um, the Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources to continue to move forward uh, in drafting um, rules and regulations and procedures and how we can, as a state, uh, work to remove PFAS uh, from our water. And that is what uh, uh, this legislation that I have, this larger comprehensive legislation that I've introduced uh, also includes the provisions to allow the Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources, only when it comes to PFAS, uh, to um, you know, exceed that uh, monetary dollar limit uh, that is put in place uh, with the RAINS Act, which was uh, first enacted in the state of Wisconsin, uh, I believe, in the uh, in 2017. Yeah, um, as you know, there's been a lot of back and forth about the 125 million set aside in the state budget specifically for PFAS. Um, so you're adding this proposal into the mix. There's also Governor Evers has proposed a plan and he's kind of in a standoff with Republicans over what to do with that money. What's your take on all of this? And do you think there will be some kind of agreement that we can get to to get something done on PFAS before the end of the session? Well, I surely hope there can be agreement. I mean, if we can't agree on the need for uh, clean drinking water for the residents of this state, uh, boy, that is a uh, sad uh, commentary on the state of uh, politics. Uh, if we cannot um, come together as Democrats and Republicans to find a common ground here, I'll tell you, this is what the common ground is. The common ground is, is that regardless of where someone may live, uh, regardless of their political background or their social economic background, they should be able to go uh, to their faucet, uh, turn it on and get uh, drinking water that is PFAS free. In order to do that, we need to make sure that we uh, set a groundwater standard in this state. We need to make sure that we got water quality monitoring, water quality testing. We dispose of the PFAS in an environmentally sensitive manner. We work with our local homeowners, our local municipalities in order to put this in place. And we also need to make sure that um, we uh, release the money that the state legislature has already approved. Uh, the state legislature in the 2023-2025 uh, biennial budget approved $125 million that would assist local municipalities and local homeowners in doing just this, cleaning up um, PFAS, uh, doing greater water quality monitoring and greater water quality testing. All of that is, um, we have dollars available to do it, but we need to make sure that we have the authorizing language to release this money. And uh, that is what the legislation that I have introduced will uh, create is authorizing legislation. So there's a roadmap uh, to release this money. And in order for all that to take place, we need to have a standard. That is what uh, my efforts in order to establish a groundwater um, standard. It's just so very important. So we know what we're the goals, the end marks um, of what we seek to accomplish in um, when it comes to uh, clean water and removing PFAS from that water. Yeah, at the top of the interview, you mentioned a little bit about the importance of making sure that citizens get clean water. So what are you hearing from your constituents about what they need when they're dealing with this contamination on a day-to-day -day basis? Well, first of all, uh, the people in western Wisconsin are hardworking, resilient, dedicated people. And the people in the town of Campbell that I represent are very patient. They're understanding. But they also um, want to hold, uh, want to know what's going on. Um, and they are saying, what gives here? Uh, why can't we uh, move forward and, um, you know, have our legislature pass legislation in order to uh, provide relief. And uh, I agree with them. Uh, they, they, want, they want PFAS removed from their water. Uh, they understand that you can't just snap your fingers and get this done. 
but they don't understand this back and forth as far as why we're not establishing a standard when it comes to uh, groundwater. So our cleanup efforts, we know, you know, we know where to go with our cleanup efforts. They don't understand why we are not, um, you know, providing uh, municipalities and residents with the tools that they need for uh, water quality testing and water quality monitoring. Why more efforts are being done uh, to make sure that we can remove PFAS, and once that PFAS is removed, it is disposed of in a safe and environmentally friendly manner. They don't understand why the legislature isn't focusing on this and getting this done. And quite frankly, it is very frustrating uh, that uh, it hasn't been done. And um, I share their uh, residents' concerns in regards to uh, this because um, we need to focus on this. This needs to get done. And I don't understand, quite frankly, uh, why, why it isn't being done. And um, it's, uh, this, this is something that I do not believe the legislature can adjourn and go home and ignore. Uh, we, need, we need to be here. We need to get this job done. And we need to demonstrate to the residents in the town of Campbell and the people throughout the state of Wisconsin um, that uh, we in the Wisconsin State Legislature recognize the severity of this issue and uh, we can work to uh, uh, provide relief. And uh, I am uh, hell-bent to do that. I will continue to focus uh, on this topic because it is so very important uh, to uh, my friends and neighbors and constituents who live in the town of Campbell and the people of the state of Wisconsin. Well, thank you so much, Senator Path, for joining us today. And we'll have a close eye on this issue as it's coming to a close, hopefully, or maybe in the end of the legislative session. We'll have to see. Well, thank you very much for your interest. I greatly appreciate it. All right, Kate, thanks for bringing us that interview and all of your extensive coverage on the PFAS issue. It's been a long road, and it's very interesting to see how it's progressing. So if our listeners want to read more about how everything is built up to where we are now, they can head over to our website at wispolitics.com. But for now... I'm Adam Kellenhofer. I'm Kate Morton. Thanks for tuning in to Wispolitics Capital Chats, brought to you by Spectrum.